Hi everybody! If you responded to your video, Hi Dr. Nick, you get a bonus point for today. Uh, today we're going to work on 8.8, .8, factoring by grouping. And our objective for the lesson is that you can be able to factor higher degree polynomials by grouping. Now this method also can be applied to factoring the trinomials that we've been working with uh, for the rest of the chapter and I will make a separate video kind of highlighting that. But problem one for today is going to be factoring a cubic polynomial. So we have 8x cubed plus 14x squared plus 20x plus 35. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the associative property and we're going to put in some uh, parentheses here. And we're going to put a parentheses before 8x cubed and after 14x squared and we're going to put them around the 20x and the 35. So we've broken this down into two pieces. Now inside each of these pieces there are common factors that we can remove. So as I look at 8x cubed and 14x squared I see that I can factor out an x squared and a 2. So we're going to put 2x squared on the outside and inside the parentheses what remains which is 4x plus 7. Alright, now we put our plus sign there that's in between the two parentheses. And in our second set of factors we have a 20x and we have a 35. I can factor a 5 out of that. So we factor out 5 and we're left with 4x plus 7. Now, this is where factoring by grouping comes in handy. We see that we have a 4x plus 7 term for each of our two components. So we can factor that out of the expression. So we're going to write parentheses 4x plus 7. And what's left when we remove it from the first term is 2x squared. So we put a parentheses, 2x squared, the plus sign. And when we took out 4x plus 7 from our second term, we're left with just a 5. And there we go. Our simplified form is 4x plus 7 times the quantity 2x squared plus 5. So now we're going to follow the same process on letter B. So we have parentheses around the 4n cubed and the 12n squared. And we're going to put a parenthesis around the negative n plus, minus 3. And we're going to put a little plus sign in between those two parentheses. We're going to add that negative. And this is just so that we can be a little clearer on where we're pulling negative signs from. So in our first, uh, first, set of, uh, first term there, we've got 4n cubed plus 12n squared. So we can take out a 4n squared from that. And we're left with n plus 3. All right, so we have our plus sign. And what I can factor out from negative n and minus 3 is a negative 1. And we have n plus 3. So now I see I have an n plus 3 in both of my terms. So that is what we're going to factor out next. So we have n plus 3 times the quantity 4n squared. That's what's left when we factor it out. Minus 1. Now. As I look at that 4n squared minus 1, that kind of sort of looks like one of those special cases that we did yesterday. That certainly looks like a difference of two perfect squares to me. So we can rewrite our n plus 3 term. And now it's a difference of perfect squares. So we take the square root of both pieces. We have 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1. And now we have our trinomial, our polynomial, broken down into four or three pieces. All right, we're going to move on to problem number two. So this is just some more practice with factoring a polynomial completely. We have 6h to the fourth, 9h to the third plus 12h squared plus 18h. So we're going to break it up into our two pieces again. We have uh, 3h 
cubed that we can pull out of our first term. And we're left with 2h plus 3. We've got our plus sign. And we can factor out a 6h from our second term. And we're left with 2h plus 3 again. Now we've got a 2h plus 3 that we can factor out of this. And what's left is going to be a 3h cubed plus 6h. Now that looks like I can factor it a little bit more, and so we're going to. So we have 2h plus 3. That term is as simple as we can get it. Our next term, I see that I can take out a 3h from both of those. So we have 3h, and we have what remains, which is 2h plus 3. Sorry, that was our original term. h squared plus 2. All right. Rewrite it nicely. And we can rewrite that in our standard form, which would be 3h times h squared plus 2 times 2h plus 3. Now you might be asking why we're not going to factor h squared plus 2. And the reason for that is I cannot come up with any factors that are going to multiply to give me a 2 and add together to give me 0. So that is not a factorable uh, expression and we will deal with solving those in chapter 9. Moving on to letter B, we have 3n to the fourth minus 12n cubed plus 15n squared minus 60n. So we can draw our parentheses in and now we're going to factor out our common term. So we can take out 3n from the uh, 3n cubed from the first one and we're left with n minus 4. And in our second term, we can take out a 5. No, we can take out 15. N. And we're left with N minus 4. So we have a common term again. It's the N minus 4. And we're left with 3N cubed plus 15N. Now, is that our most simple form? I don't think so. So we can pull out a 3n from both of those terms. And we're left with n squared plus 5. Rewrite it in our standard form with the 3n out front, n, minus, n squared plus 5, and n minus 4 doesn't matter which order you put those two uh, terms in, they're both fine. And again, we cannot simplify n squared plus 5 any further than that. There are no factors that are going to multiply to give us 5 and add up to give us 0. Our last problem for the day is going to be problem 3, finding the di dimensions of a rectangular prism. Uh, and this is, we're going to be dealing with volume, and we're going to talk about these, these prisms that have three sides. And if we remember our rectangular prism, the, the area for, or the volume for that uh, shape is going to be length times width times height. So we're going to have three things that are being multiplied together to give us this. All right, so first thing we want to do is factor out a common factor. We have a volume of 60x cubed plus 34x squared plus 4x. And from that, we can pull out a 2x from each term. So from the first term, we're left with 30x squared plus 17x plus 2. And now we can look and do our uh, fa factoring as we have. So 30 times 2 is 60. So we're looking for factors of 60 that are going to add up to 17. So factors of 60. Well, we've got 2 and 30. That's going to give us 32, not what we want. Uh, how about 3 and 20? 23, still not what we want, although a great number. 4 and 15? 
getting closer, that gives us a sum of 19. And how about 5 and 12? 5 plus 12 is 17. So we can do our uh, box method on this. So we're going to have 30x cubed in our top left hand box. And we're going to have 30x squared. squared. We're going to have 5x and 12x in our two other boxes. And we're going to have a positive 2 in our lower right. So in our first row, we have a common factor of 5x. In our second row, the common factor is 2. In our first column, our common factor is 6x. And our common factor is 1 in the last column. So our factored form for this prism is going to be 2x times 5x plus 2 times 6x plus 1. So that looks like our volume equation from the beginning, which is length times width times height. We have three different dimensions there, and they're being multiplied. All right, letter B, we have a rectangular prism that has a volume of 4x cubed plus 12x squared plus 5x. And we want to know what expression can represent that dimension uh, using factoring. So we're going to first take out our common factor which is only going to be an x. So we're left with 4x squared plus 12x plus 5. Now we're looking for factors of 20 that add up to 12. So I'm going to just start off with 2 and 10. 2 plus 10 is 12. Yay! So we do our box. and we have 4x squared and we've got 5 and we plug in our 2x and 10x that we came up with now we're looking for our common factors we have a 2x and a 5 our two columns we're gonna have a 2x and a positive 1 When we write our factored form, we have x times the quantity 2x plus 5 times the quantity 2x plus 1. And again, this looks like our volume equation, which is length times width times height. So that's all for today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow in class. Have a great night.